All right, uh, Shalom. First, I'd like to start by saying all praise to Yahweh by Shemel Shai, by Shemel Kakadash. Give honors to the elders and apostles that rule well, and salutations to the brothers and sisters in truth and sincerity. And this uh, video I'm going to pull up is on stagflation, so I'm going to just read this little passage right here on what it is. It says, an economic stagflation or recession inflation is a situation in which the inflation rate is high, the economic growth rate slows, and unemployment remains steadily high. And that's what's going on with America right now, man. Um, they're in a so-called uh, uh, recession. Um, but everything, uh, the inflation has been, uh, but there's inflation also. You know, because the uh, elites are, through the Federal Reserve, are putting, put, pumping more money into the system. You know, due to every so-called due to everybody not having a job and whatnot, so they have to uh uh, uh you know bail out everybody and pay everybody uh, x amount of money and stuff of that nature because they're not working and whatnot. It says um. It says economic stagflation or recession inflation is a situation in which the inflation rate is high, the economic growth rate slows, and unemployment remains steadily high. It presents a dilemma for economic policy since actions intended to lower inflation may uh, exacerbate unemployment. Right, exactly. Um, but um, yeah, America been bankrupt. America has been in a recession. They've been adding more money and more money to devalue the currency, and that was uh, uh, making its way around. It's finally starting to kick in a little bit more. It's been kicking in if you've been watching and paying attention. But um, it's getting worse, you know, especially since they put more money into the system. Oh, my goodness. Satan. So I'm going to play this, and then I'm going to grab the precepts. Welcome back. I'm Rick Sanchez. Let's talk about the proverbial elephant in the room, shall we? The coronavirus pandemic is bringing the economies both on Wall Street and Main Street to its knees. Maybe the best way to phrase it is that it's on a ventilator. And the ventilator is the Fed that's just printing money like there is no tomorrow. Don't have a job? We'll send you a check. Can't pay your mortgage? Send you money. Business going bankrupt, whether it's related to this or not, don't worry. Uh, we're not going to let that happen. A, should the government be doing what it's doing? B, what happens when and if the gravy train finally leaves the station? What right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring out these, these precepts. This is because uh, eventually the money system is going to collapse because of that. Uh, the QEs adding the money and... Um, Add the money to the system. Eventually, uh, Wall Street is going to collapse. That's why they're coming out with all this digital currency, getting people mind ready. You know, it's through gradualism before they pass out the RFID chip. This is uh, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 11. How ye inhabitants of Megtes, Wall Street, uh, for all the merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are cut off. You know, just a quick precept. Uh, eventually, Wall Street. Is going to collapse eventually this currency is going to collapse what are we going to be left with economically there's one guy one guy who's making a big name for himself providing both micro and macro econ lessons almost every single night on youtube in fact i'll, I'll just full disclosure here when i go home at night after doing what 22 newscasts in a row uh, I slump on the couch, sometimes with an adult beverage, and uh, I watch his segments to learn a thing or two, and maybe you could too. I want to introduce you to him. His name is uh, uh, George Gammon, and he's uh, good enough to join us now to kind of help us understand this. So, George, uh, if you would, just take it away. What is your take on this situation we find ourselves in? Well, I think the economy is going to struggle on a moving forward basis. What we've done is we've inflated what we all call the everything bubble. And that's a direct result of the Fed and their intervention going back to the late 80s. It doesn't start with Powell, that's for sure. But if you go look at the dot-com bust, they 
tried to fix that or paper over it by inflating another bubble. That was a housing bubble. Then 2008, 2009, they had to create another asset bubble. And that was what, where we are today. It's, uh, I always say in my videos that the U.S. economy is built on three things, asset bubbles, debt, and confidence. And I think the Fed knows that very well. So in your intro, you're saying how they're just printing money, trying to paper over everything. And just they're, they're literally throwing everything at it other than the kitchen sink. They'll probably do that uh, in the future. So it's $125 billion a day in quantitative easing. They were doing uh, committing to a trillion a day in the repo market. Now they've gone and created a repo market outside of the United States. And what they're trying to do, in my opinion, is get as much of the private sector balance sheet onto their balance sheet. Because if you have, let's say, equities mm -hmm. or bond, or any type of asset on the Fed's balance sheet, since they don't have a profit and loss, if those assets take a 50% haircut, then theoretically, it's not going to affect the, uh, the economy. And because the economy is so dependent upon those asset prices staying high, I think that's pretty much going to be the Fed's game plan. So the question really becomes, mm -hmm. what are the knock-on effects of the Fed taking their balance sheet to $10 trillion, $20 trillion, you name it. And uh, I think the release valve there long term is definitely going to be the dollar. So if that's the case, uh, how do we, uh, regular Joes, you know, out here, try and figure out what's going to happen in the future for, for us? Not for the big guys on Wall Street, just for us. Well, I think what you're going to see is a stagflationary type of environment. And again, there are no certainties. There are only probabilities. So what does that look like? That looks like the 1970s from the standpoint of call it 10% plus inflation, and that's the inflation that the government is willing to admit to, right. <laughs> which, which is probably low, right? And then you're going to see high unemployment. And I think the big difference between 2008, 2009, and all the money printing the Fed did is that went into financial assets. So a lot of you know the counter argument to what I'm saying is, well, George, it didn't really create price inflation back then. So the Fed can go ahead and just print as much money as they want. And we're just going to see that movie replayed again. But what they're not understanding is before the Fed created money through bank reserves, and it's true. The, the primary dealer banks and the banks under the Fed's umbrella, they have to actually take an action in order to get the money into the real economy. But now, with the government doing their $2 trillion in stimulus, or whatever it is, I mean, it's probably going to be a lot more than that, they're going to get that money into the real economy. So that's going to be chasing, most likely, fewer goods and services because of the supply chain disruptions that we see and deglobalization. And so you're going to most likely see consumer prices, the stuff that you buy at the grocery store every day is going to go uh, up in price where assets come down. And uh, again, that stagflationary type of environment. Stagflation. He talks about it all the time. I recommend you go see him on YouTube. He's good. Uh, George, uh, thanks again. Hey, uh, come on back. I'm looking forward to having another conversation with you. Yeah, right. thank you for having me. Uh yep, so eventually America is going to be, um, uh, uh, um, the currency is going to be taken away. Um, and they're going to uh, implement the RFID chip. America is going down right before everybody's eyes. A lot of people know it. A lot of people not reacting to it. People, like, yeah, like, yeah, a lot of people shocked. Yeah, a lot of people um, committing suicide. <laughs> It's worst is yet to come. So, the second Ezra chapter 9, verse 1, it says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And the Lord is visited in this place. That's why so much destruction going on, so much chaos. The money system getting ready to collapse, stuff like that. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, right? And these people, uh, it's earthquakes happening everywhere, the uproars of the people. These people are uprising because um, their economies are collapsing. You know, all this inflation, they can't afford to pay for the bills, the food, and then a lot of people don't have jobs and stuff, you know. So everybody uproaring, 
for various reasons, you know. And soon the uproars of uh, of not being able to feed your kids is gonna come, you know. It says, then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, right? For like as all that is made in the world had the beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, right? And the, and the end is being manifest by way of prophecy through the spirit of power. How about Shema Shai, man? Hmm. Let me see. The second Ezra chapter six, verse six, it says, Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone and through none other. By me also they shall be ended, and by none other. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times, and when shall be the end of the first, and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. Jacob represents the 12 tribes of Israel. Esau represents uh, these Caucasians. For Esau is the end of the world, right? And we're in the time of Esau's rule, you know, and his world is coming to an end. That's all it means by the end of the world, man. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. And Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, kingdom is next, you know. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 51. Verse 7 says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Right, so Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, meaning the Lord uplifted Babylon, America, by bringing his people over here and having them build this place up, man, you know. That's why this place is coming down now because the Lord is done with this place and he, now he's raising his people back up, man. But the only reason why Babylon, which is America, uh, has been the great, the uh, the, uh, the place or uh, had that glory is because uh, of the Lord, man. You know, it said that may all the earth drunken, the nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad, right? So the nations got mad because they took on the philosophies of America, in particular the money system. And when America's system started to come down, everybody else's system who was tied to it started to come down. Then all they needed all these bailouts and everything. It says, uh, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take bomb for her pain? Right, so America eventually is going to be destroyed. It says, take bomb for her pain, right? They're using the QEs to try to uh, heal America. If so be, she may be healed, right? But she's not going to be healed, man. It says, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed, right? So these QEs aren't going to uh, fix the society, fix the economy. It's not going to make America great again. The jobs that left are going to stay gone, you know, and um, it's only going to get worse. It says... We would have healed Babylon, but it is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country. For her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Right. So all the wickedness that America has done in this world and all the uh, 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 chaos that these devils, these Edomites have caused, especially starting with the Israelites, uh, uh, their, judgment is, uh, their judgment is on the way because of that, man. The Lord, like, enough. Now it's time for him to come back. And put everything back in order the way it was through the spirit, man. But uh, I'm ended off at that. Uh, call call Halal Yabashi Ma Shai. Them honors to the elders and apostles to rule well. And salutations to the brothers that's doing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.